Hello and welcome. Now, we've all come across an Excel report which looks something like what you're seeing here. It's basically sales by business unit for 2023. And if you notice, there are two different measures here. Now, one is sales, which is broken down by month. So for each month for business unit, we have sales. And the second one is ASP. Now, ASP is a measure that is not by month, but it's at a year level. So we have the ASP for each business unit by year. Now, how would I convert report like this into Power BI? Let's take a look. Okay, now I am in the Power BI desktop and the natural option for me is to use a matrix visual. And when I use matrix visual, of course I can have the column and uh, rows option. So here I pick business unit as my columns. Oh, sorry, I should do that as rows. And then I will use the month start date as my columns okay so now i get these two and the next thing i want is the two measures right so if i go in and pick uh, let's start with asp so now i have asp now this asp as you notice is spread out by month although it's the same exact value it's being it's it's by month and i don't want this at a month level i want it at a year level right because only sales but as i add sales let me actually increase the size of these so it's easy for you to see it okay hopefully that, that's a little more visible now so you see that asp now is by month it's the same value it's repeated across each month and as i add sales it does the same thing now sales of course it's by month so it makes sense so i have sales by month by business unit but i i want asp at the year level i don't want it broken down by month so how do I go about achieving this using Power BI? Let's let's take a look. So what I've done is I if I go uh, go to this data view, I've created a table called header. Now this header has three columns. The first one is the header column, which is basically what will show up as a header, uh, report header in my report. And this is a sequence of my header. So I want ASP to be the first column and then the dates. And then I have this month ID, which I'll be using it in my measure. Now, the thing to note here is the header is a standalone table. It, it's, it's got, it does not have a relationship with any other table. Now, I've also created this smart measure. So if we review this measure, you'll notice that first thing is I read the value of the header, the selected header and the month ID, which as you just saw, it comes from the header table. We have a column called month ID. And based on the month ID that is selected, I calculate the sales, okay? And then what is returned is this switch sequence. If I select, based on what is selected, if I have selected ASP, then it returns ASP. If it's any of the other month ID values, then it'll return the sales for that particular month, okay? So this is a very simple scenario where I've used a smart measure. You can, you know, depending on this, your use case, it might be much more complex. Okay, now that I have this smart measure and header table, let me see if I can create this using the matrix visual again. So let's start with the matrix visual again. So I will start with, again, the same thing, business unit and business unit in rows. This time, I'm not going to use month start date. I'm going to use the header, which will be in my columns. Now, since there's no relationship between these two tables, you'll get an error here. But let me go in and bring in the smart measure I created. Now there's data, let me format this so that we, it's easy to see, okay? So now, there you go. So now we have the business unit names, ASP as a single column, and then the sales for each month for each business unit. So this, this is how you would convert Excel report with multiple measures and different configuration into a report that is similar in Power BI. But we're doing this, there are some restrictions, right? So for example, the report on top, which is a plain old Power BI report, we have the option of sorting this by all the three different, two different measures and the business unit name. Whereas when I create the smart measure, now I can only sort by the business unit name and the smart measure name. So I can't sort by any one of these columns or I can I cannot sort by just ASP. So that, there's that restriction. Also the header names might change over time. So you have to make your the header table more dynamic. Let's say you want to, you're, you're, you're doing the sales for 2024, those headers will change um, and so forth. So there's a lot more work involved if we go this smart measure way of doing things. Now I have a third option, which I think is, which is much more straightforward and easy to manage as well. So let's take a look at that. Now here I'm using InfoRiver Visual. 
Now, if you're not aware, Info River is, is a custom visual and it is a licensed visual. So I'm using this Info River visual. So I'll do the same thing that I do in a matrix for this Info River visual. I pick a business unit name and then I'll pick the month start date and I'll pick the two measures that we have, sales and ASP. Now, if you notice, it behaves very similar to how matrix visual behaves. We have sales and ASP for each month. Now, my problem statement was I want ASP to be a single column because it's at a year level. So how do I achieve that using InForever is I can insert custom measure. So this is a measure that you're creating within the InForever visuals. It's, it's not part of your Power BI model. So I want to insert a formula. I want a new visual column and I call the, and I can select ASP and let me give this a name. So let me, maybe I'll call this AS, I'll just call this ASP as well. So I've created this column. Now it shows on the right here, but you still, we still have two ASPs, one for each month and one, the, the new visual column I've created. So to disable the one that comes from Power BI. So this ASP is the one that comes from Power BI. And this is the ASP I created within InForever. So I'll disable the one that comes from Power BI because I'm referencing it using my visual column. And there you go. Now I have sales for each month and I have ASP at the year level. So I can drag this easily over to the left, configure this. And then, yeah, so there you go. We have the layout that we want. And then of course you can do further configuration. Let's say the, the sales is in millions. I want it in thousands and maybe I want to add a dollar amount to make it currency so I can select the measure and then go here, add a prefix of dollar and so forth. So it's easy to you know, format this. It comes with its own ribbon. So a lot of configuration options, the InfoRiver visual itself. And with a little effort, you can configure the InfoRiver visual to look something like this make it as a professional that you want to want it to be and with a lot of formatting options. Now, like I mentioned, InfoRiver is a licensed and paid visual, but the more I use it, I think it's a very good addition to the to our visuals uh, in Power BI. It provides a lot more options. I started using this for my forecasting and planning template, but then I see it, it can be used for a lot of other scenarios. So I definitely recommend taking a look at this visual and see if it's helpful for you. And as always, if you've got any questions, obvious.com.